look at look at my slides and all that sort of stuff? Um, I'll be putting up your slides and you'll be guiding me to where to go because I can't I don't do think it. we can share your screen. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. That was why you sent me it so that I had it because we were concerned about um, about it going up on your screen. So um, hi, everybody. As you're signing in, please just put in the chat where you're located. We love to know how people are signing in and from different places. Uh, I'm Wendy Murdoch, and I'm hosting this webinar with Dr. Robert Belker. Um, my background today, I'm just going to get it out of the way. You can see the snow here. I'm in Rappahannock County, Virginia, and last night on the mountains, we had snow. It was 37 degrees at my house. So even though spring is here and my flowers are up, we're still getting some chill. I know there's a lot of people that have a lot more snow than we do. So Bob, if you open your chat, you're going to see we have people from Texas, Maryland, Pennsylvania, California, okay. Colorado. Oh, wow. Um, a lot of yeah, we, we're up to 66 people so far. So we'll just wait a minute to just let that kind of roll up. Um, if you do have questions, it's easier for me to handle them if you put them in the chat rather than the Q&A because my screen's not big enough to open both um, at the same time without kind of blocking other things. So I would appreciate, yeah, we got somebody from Luxembourg, Bob. Um, I see uh, Netherlands too. Wow. Yep, and South Africa, Johannesburg. This is, this is what, what makes Zoom so amazing is that even though we're in lockdown, we can reach people all around the world and and get the word out, Bob. And that's why I'm so excited to have you as a guest today because I, you have so much information that is needed for people to hear. And so I'm just really happy you're joining me as a guest today. Rest in Virginia, hi local person. Um, and we'll just give it another minute. It looks like it's uh, slowing down a little bit. We're up to, to um, 68 yet. Yeah, it's light snow in Michigan, not a surprise, sweet. Yes. And that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay, Alberta, six inches of fresh snow. All right, so my guest today is Dr. Robert Bowker, who is now um, retired from Michigan State University. I first met Bob at something called um, Soundfest back in, um, in uh, Washington State. Mark Plumley was organizing, oh, wow. yeah. do you remember? Yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah, 99 and 2000, somewhere back in that decade. <laughs> I was just a whippersnapper then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I just remember your lecture and how passionate you were about horses and horses' feet. And so, um, you know, then we kind of just, did, you know, went up our separate ways, but then uh, we hooked up again when I started doing Surefoot. And Bob was one of the first people I called to ask him what's going on. So we'll get to that discussion a little later. Um, but, uh, I think, Bob, what I'm going to do is just turn this over to you and let you introduce yourself a little bit more because. Um, that's about all I know about you. <laughs> okay, no, that's good. Um, uh, okay, the slides, I'd like to start with the slides because I'm, I'm Bob Bowker, uh, retired from MSU, full professor, veterinarian, uh, went to school at University, uh, University of Pennsylvania and got my PhD in sleep biology. Then I did a, a postdoc for four years and I've taught at a number of places. I was at Michigan State teaching gross anatomy for nearly 30 years. So it's, um, and I got into it because of the nerves. Uh, with a, back in the early 90s, there was an interest in where the nerves went and that sort of stuff. And that's what I could do because before I was a neurobiologist with sleep and everything like that. So we started and I realized that the anatomy of the horse's foot, what the horse was saying is different what's in the textbooks. And then I started to dig deeper more and more, and I realized this, uh, there's a lot of anatomy books that are not quite right. So, and that's kind of where I got into it because I, I was interested in navicular. That's how I started. And uh, the more I looked, the more I saw that the navicular bone is the, is the tip of the iceberg. The, the whole foot is on its last legs, I guess, of, when you have very severe navicular. But, but the beauty of the horse is for, it can recover if given the opportunity. Right. So, doing, you know, so, All right. so what I'm going to do, Bob, is I'm going to share my screen so that we put up your slideshow on my screen. Uh, Bob's internet connection is not the strongest, so we thought this might be the best way to do the presentation and not have to worry about Bob trying to figure out if the internet was not strong enough. So um, again, if you have questions, please put it in the chat. 
um, and I'll try to keep track of that. Um, and at the same time, I have to run the slideshow and go where Bob tells me to point. So um, just bear okay. with us if we have some technical glitches here. Okay, basically what you can see here, what I wanna show you is um, each foot is different. They're all different on the outside and as well as the inside. And it's a product of its environment. And the biggest environmental factor is the trimmer, farrier, trimmer or whatever. And what I've, I've come to realize from my dissections is that the horse's hoof is a decoration. And I realize that's shocking to most people, but at least it gets it on the table. But uh, it's not the only loading structure that the horse uses, but it's, it's uh, not that important. It's kind of the horse's hoof is kind of like our fingernail. And our fingernail is just a, a protective piece of tissue, hard tissue that's under the end of, over the end of the finger. So it's just a protective mechanism, but it does a few other things, but it's not the primary loading structure. And that's where the foot starts to go uh, off the rails here. So what you see here, and this is this first slide, it's just uh, one to get me going, but it's the, you can see on the left, there's a, a horse's foot. So it was, well, when it's a live horses, so you can, when you really look at it there, the two front feet are different from each other. All four feet are different from each other, and it depends on how that foot is interacting with the ground. That's why they're different. And you can see one side will be a little steeper, and the, uh, usually the, the lateral side is a little more flared. And most all of these horses will have a long toe. And that is, to me, I've learned in the last couple of years, uh, that is the, the worst thing that can happen to the horse's foot because what it does, it changes the entire biomechanics and that sort of stuff, even if you think you're doing a good job, okay? It's the long toe, and if you keep a short toe, uh, the foot will be pretty good inside, okay? The, in the middle one, you see there's a, a feral horse from uh, the, the Northwest United States, and what you see there, uh, there's a, the outer rim of the, around the sole, uh, it's a very thin rim. That's what the horse is w w walking on there, all right? And what it is, that rim is at ground level, and the inside of that is also where the horse is uh, uh, being supported on the sole. And most of that wall is, is quite thick, but it's not using it because it's been worn off. That's what the ho horses want. And if, uh, Wendy, with the arrows, you put your arrow on the rim on the left side, and keep going up, go up slowly, keep going up to the heels, go up straight, keep going uh, right up there and start to come back down to, to the bars. Yep. You, you, you don't perceive it here, but that part of the horse's foot is also the loading structure in this condition, in this uh, wild horse foot. And so you can see there's a lot of uh, uh, the rim of the, uh, the rim of the hoof, the rim of the sole is also a loading structure, and the heels, because most, many of these wild horse feet, uh, or feral horse feet, when they're in this condition, they land such that you can, you can see where the central sulcus is. I'm gonna show you, the central sulcus is to me, you know, one of the most important structures on the foot. It's at ground level, the frog shouldn't bear weight. It, it should kind of kiss the ground and, uh, Oh, Jamie Jackson was kind of the first person who suggested that. He said it was passive with the ground, and I didn't know initially what that was, but as I've learned, it's kind of like the frog just should kiss the ground, you know, like you kiss your sister on the cheek. Okay, very, very light contact, okay? And, and you can see the whole back part of the foot is, is being loaded. And on the right-hand side, what you see is a three-year-old racehorse foot. Um, and what you can see with that, it's not a symmetrical foot. You yeah. can see one side is a little more steep than the other side. And on the, uh, the right-hand side, you see about a centimeter above the bottom, there's a little bulge outward. Okay. That goes all the way around the foot. And that is where the nails go in. I mean, that's where they went in. And what it is, the foot is reacted to that. Okay, so that's why they're, it's a little bit wider there. And I'll just throw out that when you have a glass of wine or whatnot is, how do you explain why that, that bottom part of the horse's foot is wider, more horn there, if everything came down from the hoof, 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 uh, everything came down from the cornet? 
Yeah, so you can actually see, Bob, this, the line here from the cornet down to about here is one line, and then it really it starts. And it'll bulge out down where you see that little piece of uh, hoof sticking out uh, to the left, right there. That's where the nail went. So that you've got this bulge all the way around in, in many of these horses' hooves, okay? And it'll vary depending on the nails and all that sort of stuff. So what it is, this foot is re reacting, responding to what the environment is. And it's been trimmed because it had a shoe on, okay? So these four feet here, when you look at them very carefully, they're all different. And I, is there any more on that slide? Uh, nope. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. We go to okay, the next yeah, slide. Yeah. This on the left-hand side is the same slide. You can see it's, it's the same feral horse foot, but you can actually see the wear going up towards the heels uh, up there and on the uh, right-hand side. And there's a dirt plug, and the dirt plug in the central part of the foot is, is also uh, very important because what it does, it, it distributes the load wherever it should be. You know, it's, uh, it redistributes the load so it's kind of uh, what the foot wants, okay? So, but the main thing there, you see the central sulcus. And what you see here at the very caudal part, there's a little uh, blip. That means the central sulcus is closed. And Oh, this little uh, blip right here, Bob? That right there, yes. Okay. That central sulcus is closed. There's a frog stay underneath that on the inside. And that frog stay is very important. And why that blip is there, it means from the one heel to the other, it's tissue going all the way across. across. Oh, so all way. of the uh, frog frog stay is on the bottom part of the foot. And just way down the road here that the frog stay, if you, some of you, uh, especially from Sweden, some of these Netherlands, you know what ships are, mass, ships that hold the sails. The stay are the ropes that hold the mass rigid. Okay. And way back when in the 1800s, some of the anatomists, whoever, Call the frog stay that's, that sticks up on the inside of the foot that holds all these fascial sheets that are inside rigid. And when that happens, the frog, the foot is working very, very, very well. When the frog stay and the central sulcus start to migrate up towards the fetlock, yep. the back part is open. You, you start to get in the sheared heels and all that, which many of you are probably here. Or, what it is, the, the very point of the frog stay, stay on the inside is going to be very close to the bony column. So when the horse is standing on it, the fascial sheets that are inside, which we'll get to, are, are, uh, are not tight. They're, they're loose and weak. And so the negative pressure and all the support that's inside of the foot is not there. That's why the, the frog stay central sulcus is very, very important. And it's only in the last that's about eight or nine years now that I've really realized how important that part of the foot is, okay? Again, the hoof is a decoration, and I realize that's disturbing to many people, but at least it gets it on the uh, uh, table for discussion because I liken it to if, if you, had a, you had a car and you had a, an engine problem and the mechanic you were dealing with, he just wanted to get some very good wax from the uh, car store and you frantically polish the outside of the car. You do nothing for the inside. So what you're trying to do is trim the foot to change the inside of the foot. You're, train, you're trimming the hoof to, train, to change the inside of the foot. Is that clear? Yeah. I know I'm trying to tell you everything I know in 30 minutes. You're doing great, Bob. You're doing awesome. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, the next one. Oh, and you can see it on the right-hand side. That's a, a, obviously a domestic horse. But in this environment, I'll show you the, the feet are going to adapt and they're going to be different than those depending on whether you're in the Northwest of the United States or Europe or whatever. What you see on the left hand side, this is like one of those horses. You can see uh, the hoof wall, okay? Uh, it comes all the way around there. And you see most of the weight is going to be in that ridge on the inside, it's the outer part of the sole. Ridge, this ridge right here. This ridge, it goes all the way around. That's what the horses. Uh, being supporting its weight up. And the point of all this is wherever you have the weight, or wherever you have the weight being supported, like on the right-hand side of the shoe. So it means all the weight is going to be on the hoof wall. The tissues on the inside of the foot are going to adapt and respond differently than what they are on the left side of the foot, the left side of the slide, okay? And what you see on this uh, slide here, you can see the central sulcus. Yeah. What it is though, it's again, if you 
um, take the arrow, yep. uh, Wendy, and you can go all the way up on the on the hoof, this rim of the hoof, and you can go all the way up, uh, go to go to your right, and you come down a little bit, uh, somewhere halfway up, halfway up from there, somewhere, and go to the outside. Right in there is that part of the foot that's on the ground. Oh, okay. Okay, so you got so what it is? It's this rim of the sole, okay, and that part of the hoof that's being still being supported in the way. But the central sulcus is in the central part of the foot. Right here. Okay, and again, the frog stay is there and all that sort of good stuff. Okay, but this foot is adapted to its environment and what it is in that previous slide I showed you. Those horses, uh, where they are, they're in the mountains of Arizona. They're either going uphill or downhill. Even this, which appears level, it is not level. So there's very little uh, land where that's level where these are. And these are they're domestic hog horses, obviously, but they're outside and, and they're rehabbing them and all that sort of stuff. And that's what you get with the, the foot underneath. And if you put a foot that has a different conformation, eventually you'll get to that point on the left. Okay, it, it adapts if you if you give it a chance. Okay, what you see on uh, the right hand side, you got a, a peripheral loading device, a shoe. You see the, the uh, so where the load is, is going to be between the end of the shoe all the way around. It's going to be on the wall, which is going to be different than the one on the left. Okay. The central sulcus goes part way up to the, you know, up towards the heel. But if you follow that up, that would be open. And which means that the central sulc, the frog stay, is no longer vertical to the ground. The point of it is starting to go towards the bony pollen. Okay. Now, from the tip of the frog, the apex of the frog, to the inner part of the shoe, go to the inside of the shoe at the toe. At the okay. toe. Got it. Okay. That distance there, if it, that's where the toe was, if I said, that would be, I'm trying to think of the word. I don't want it in my horse, but it would be uh, pretty good for this foot. But it's, that's still a, a too longer toe. And you can see it since I got a show, shoe on it, the breakover is set one to two centimeters longer. And this changes the whole biomechanics on the inside of the foot. And what it is, the way uh, this foot grows, everyone knows the hoof wall grows down from the coronet. Okay. But you people pay attention to the sole grows from the bars towards the toe. So this is why you continually get a, a long toe in all these horses. And, and I always tell students that if you uh, make a wager with all the student loans you're going to have with the next person, you, next client you're going to see, you'll see a, a long toed horse. If you said that, you'd win all the time because there are very few horses that have a short toe. And what it is, it's, it's us, failing to come inside the white line periodically. And what I mean by that is I'll show you how I do it. Uh, and we come in the, inside the white line all the time. And when, when you come in the side of the white line and we do it from the bottom part of the foot, the sole, not the dorsal hoof wall, and we bring in the heels back all the time. And that keeps the foot underneath the bony column. Okay, I'll, I'll keep mentioning this because when you start to get to like the foot on the right, is inside of the foot, the tissues are changing, they're, they're adapting differently, and they're responding positively or negatively. And uh, the other issue I have with people is, like I was studying navicular disease, and everyone, when they study, when they diagnose navicular, they want to see changes in the navicular bone or the DDFT, okay? DDFT being deep digital oh, flexor tendon. Deep digital flexor tendon, I'm sorry. That's okay. But what it is, these horses, you'll start to see changes in the frog in these horses when they're it's like three year old racehorses. The frog is starting to deteriorate, and when the and it just progresses through the frog, the digital cushion goes right up towards the navicular bone. By the time you get to the navicular bone, you have uh, a lot of damage in the foot. And what I mean, and this foot on this on the right side, it's kind of like the foot is responding to every footfall, and I kind of liken it the foot's being hit with a hammer. Like in this case here on the right hand side, if you had that foot being hit by a hammer on a hard surface, the vibration is going to go up through the wall into the tissue and it's going to start to affect it positively or negatively. Usually it's going to, and what happens as that horse ages, you get this tissue that's adapted in a negative way 
start to deteriorate. So when you get to eventually so much damage, and you start to get clinical signs. And I'll show you in the most many of my navicular horses is when they're uh, lame, you start to see a, a loss of blood vessels in the dermis underneath the coffin bone. Okay. Okay. What that means is just this vibration is starting to destroy, destroy tissue uh, throughout the foot. So what it is when you start to see a navicular uh, disease or a navicular bone, you have an enormous amount of damage in the foot. Not only in the frog did your cushion, the sole underneath the coffin, but also the hoof wall will be different. So is the frog, the change in the central sulcus in the frog, one of the first indicators that things are going south? Yes, it's, it's one of the early signs, yes. Okay. And, and when I see a long toe, things are on their way. They've started. Okay. 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 Let's go to the next one. Okay. So, but, but again, it gets back to what the horse is uh, walking on. This here, I got this slide from um, uh, Brian Hansen from Australia a long time ago. And what these were, they were feral horses. And everyone thinks a feral horse has a very good foot. They are, depending on where they are. But this these horses uh, were walking on the beach. So what it is, the hoof wall had very little loading structure, and that's why you see the hoof wall is, is very long around the perimeter of the sole. Yeah. Okay. And, and, but the loading structure in this case here was going to be most of the sole, very little of the hoof wall. It going to be the thickness of the hoof wall that's going to be loaded. And the point of all that, when you took a radiograph of these feet, and Brian did that, is the relationship of the coffin bone to the sole was constant. Okay, and that's what they were using for. So in this case here, this this foot in these feral really was a decoration. So the the load was where it would be with say one of the other horses, uh, wild horses foot you showed, but it this long wall just grew because there was no resistance in the. There was no resistance, so it could not break off. Right. Okay, and and. To go along that way, if could you go back? Yep. A little bit, like uh, go back here. To, uh, there we go. There we go. Right there. This to, when you look at the apex of the frog. Oh, apex okay. of the frog. Yep. Yep. These feet, they have. Uh, I'll just say a long toe, but it's nowhere near as long as what you see in the domestic horse, because what it is, this is on abrasive surface. They're they're on lava rock and that sort of stuff. For the horse's hoof to, and uh, to wear, it has to grow beyond the sole just a little bit. Okay, as so it has to get ahead of that point before it can be brought back. Okay. So, so in this case here, these feet you'll see there, and many of these horses, when you look under the on a radiograph, they will usually have a long toe. From my perspective, from everyone else's, perspective, it's a short toe, but it's really a longer toe than what. You want because the biomechanics is not as bad as what you see on domestic horses, because most people on domestic horses never come inside the white line. So the toe, I'll show you how the toe just gets longer and longer and longer. So, but this is a pretty good foot, and you see the the dirt plug is what the horse is walking on. Okay, so far so good. But but again, this entire foot is changing. Okay, with with each step, it's going to change. And you, the trimmer, the farrier, are the bigger, biggest factor uh, of, of how you can affect this foot. And so what I believe is that if you, you want to trim the foot so the frog is kissing the ground, the central sulcus is flat on the ground, kind of kissing, and it's closed caudally, right and the toe is relatively short. Yep. Okay, that's kind of the, the, the game plan here, okay? Okay. All right, this is what you see here. This is a, a pain horse. And by looking at it, you have a long toe under run heel. But if this was on a level ground, okay, or in most of the United States or whatever, the horse would be kind of sore because the biomechanics is, is changing the inside of the foot. But it's in that uh, mountainous region I showed you in Arizona. It's either going up or going down. So it's, when the horse is going down the steep mountain, he just has to lift the foot up a little bit and the weight moves the foot forward. So it's not as much uh, pressure on the navicular bone, DDFT and all that sort of stuff. So it's not a big deal in these cases. But if you start to put that on a level ground, 
whether it's, it's uh, dirt or whatever, you'll start to have biomechanic changes in the inside of the foot that's gonna create problems. So if I understand you right, Bob, what you're saying is that the environment that the horse lives in is gonna have a dramatic effect on the way he wears his feet and the shape of his feet. Right, but you have to remember the trimmer is a bigger environmental factor. Right, I'm, I'm thinking about horses that are just in the wild. Yeah, yeah. Their and environment so, determines their foot. Right, and what you see in the more abrasive it is, they're actually wearing the hoof off. And so they are on the bottom part of the foot, the, uh, the circumference around the sole, and they're, uh, hopefully the, the frog will be kissing the ground. Okay, but that's what they're wearing. Uh, you know, uh, that's how the foot is wearing. To go back here, all right, what you see on the left is a feral horse foot from Western United States. I got this from um, Gene Ovenick. Oh yeah, I just saw him in, uh, 20, years ago. Oh, in okay. January. 20 years ago, something like that. And what you see here, you see that there's a very thick hoof wall all the way around and you see the frog. The frog is very narrow here, but the back part, you see all that white. That is the part of the frog and heel balls that's on the ground. And why I keep emphasizing that, I'll show you the frog in front of that central sulcus and the heels is full of vessels. This part here, this pointy bit. This pointy bit is there and the uh, back part is too in this, in this condition here. And you okay. see where the white line is, that's where the, the foot is being loaded. So the, where you've drawn the black line, that's the loading line. Yeah, because it was worn. And when you get all the dirt out of that, where the, and put a, uh, what the black marks are. Back in the late 90s, everyone was talking about a four point trim and that sort of stuff. This is where it came from. If you remove the dirt from a barefooted horse on a, uh, any sort of ground, what you're left with is four, usually four points at the heels and the toes. Okay. And that's kind of, everyone thought that's what the loading structure was, but that's the areas where there's very little wear. There's no wear on the foot there. And so the dirt plug kind of fills in the cup it, of the foot. It, and it, it, right, it kind of, I, I forget what I usually say, it's kind of, a, it neutralizes any of the imperfections of the foot. How is that? It's a, yeah. A, and so depending on what you have and depending on the dirt plug, like in my pasture, the dirt plug is made out of uh, sand and rocks and hay and manure. And if you pick the foot up, it'll actually be bulging out uh, above the, the wall. And that's what they're walking on. Okay, it's kind of a, a modified sneaker. So it's really a, a pad of material that's filled in the cup to distribute the weight over a right. larger surface right. area. Yeah, and that's kind of, uh, so now you're in, you have this uh, conundrum, should we trim out the foot or not trim out the foot? I mean, you know, as far as uh, the dirt plug and all that sort of stuff. And um, from my perspective, my trimmer trims them out, removes the, the, the uh, the pad uh, uh, in there every every three or four weeks when she comes. So it's just a, okay. Okay. And on, on the right hand side, you see, it's the same thing. And this is a domestic horse. And you see, I showed you before. You see, in front of the the white line, that's the that's the sole. What the wear is on, and he goes back and goes up towards the heels, and you got the central sulcus. Okay. But this is those environments that there that's determining the foot. I showed you Australia. You got one extreme. And this is the Rocky Mountains. And also, there's no water where uh, these horses are either. So it makes the hoof wall and sole very hard. Okay, so far so good? Yep. Okay, all right. So this is, we have a domestic horse. Okay, and this is typical domestic horse that I usually see. I see this all the time. And what you have here is the left front. One, you see the toes are very long. Yep. Okay. And if you follow the coronet uh, from the front all the way back, you start to go, and then it starts to curl down. Mm -hmm. When that curl down is, it means the, the central sulcus and the frog stay are not working right, and the, it's kind of an underrun heel. And you can follow it down. The heel is uh, quite a bit forward, okay. And the point of all this is this is the uh, beginning uh, of the problems when you start to see this, or before you start to see this condition, and this is our failure to not come inside the white line. Okay, and so, it, ideally, the hoof wall would be coming straight down from that cornet band, even back here at the heel, right, Bob? 
Yeah, if you if the if you see the coronet being straight. Yeah. If you if you continue that out towards the right hand side of the picture, towards the little dirt area on the cement, something like that, halfway across. If it was that straight line, and then the the back part of the heel came down, not quite straight, but it was it was, it was uh, moving forward again. The heels would be more upright. I'll put it that way. Yep. Yeah, that's what I mean. They'd be more upright. We wouldn't see this. Like here's the back of the 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 heel ball, but the ground surface is. Right. So it, it means the whole, forward, right. Uh, the whole back part of the foot, which will get into the lateral cars and digital cushion, is being bypassed in this foot here. It's not being used. Right. Okay. So we've had a question, Bob, about some of the things you're talking about. And the question is, from what you're describing, it seems like we should not be picking our horse's feet out before riding because the natural padding, that dirt plug that fills the foot is a good thing. That's my, I, I, I kind of, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. okay. Which is, uh, but I mean, if you're sure your horse doesn't have a problem or anything like that, but uh, but it's like like I said, my my trimmer trims them every three to four weeks when she comes, and she removes the dirt plug when she, she comes. She removes the dirt plug, and she doesn't touch the sole, nor does she. Uh, 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 not here. Uh, excuse me. Yep. That's okay. Uh, and she doesn't touch the frog. Okay. Back in the late 1800s, both vets, veterinarians, and fairies were on the same page. Do not touch the frog or the sole under any conditions. Now, would you take off flaps and that sort of thing? If flaps are fine. Uh, okay. yeah. um, I've learned um, everyone wants to put their own identity on what they're trim. So this, the flaps, it's not going to be a big deal, so I don't get too bent out of shape. But it usually will uh, break off, tear off. Okay. But it, I mean, it's a gray area because if it's a big, large flap, all right, uh, you should yeah. tear the, uh, remove it. But it's just, uh, it's, there's more gray here. Like with me, uh, even my trimmer, when she comes, she's very good in all this sort of good stuff, is uh, I, when she's doing it, as she leaving, getting done, and I watch her each foot, I says, uh, bevel the toe from the inside and don't touch the frog bring the heels back and then she'll do that a little bit more so i know i can get a little a little the heels back a little bit more and the toe a little bit shorter than what she did so it's just i i don't want to be uh overseeing her too much because she probably won't come back and i'm out in the boonies so <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't want to alienate your trimmer no, right <laughs> no, no no so it's just uh, the, but 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 you, the, the the foot is uh it's always you can always make, tweak it a little bit more so yep. it's, a, it's a, yeah, okay. Okay, so this, that foot we just saw is, uh, I saw it because it was clinically lame. It's an early teenage horse and it was a head bobbing, lame with navicular on both sides. And I define navicular syndrome as when they're lame in both front legs. Okay, I don't need to see a hole in the navicular bone or anything like that, but if they're lame off and on in both front legs, it's usually, most all the time, it's navicular. It's not an abscess or anything like that. And if you, the veterinarian does a nerve block, it makes the other leg uh, much more severe. So I know it's, it's navicular. And even when you see this at a, a, a younger horse, I assume it's navicular. And admittedly, I have to be careful, uh, depending on the client. Because if you tell the client that their five-year-old horse has navicular, they will jump off the roof. But it means this is what we have to do to bring this horse back. And you can bring these horses back. This horse here, it was, it was a, a grade three lame as at a walk. And it had it a long time. And it had gone through several iterations of different types of shoes and that sort of stuff for a number of years. But it was still sore. Okay. Now, uh, the next slide. This is the same foot. A year what later. do you mean? This is the same horse? Same horse. Wait, this horse is now this horse. This horse is now this horse. And what you see here, and if you go, all right, go back up to the previous one. This one here, I just said it's got a long toe, that the heels are curving down, the coronet curves down, which means the frog is not on the ground, the central sulcus is not on the ground, and it's gonna be uh, underrun. And what it is, this wall is gonna be varying degrees of on the ground. In this case, it was a shoe, okay? Now, if this here is a, a year or so later, and uh, the, the coronet is nearly straight all the way down, and when you yeah. see that, 
the uh, uh, the the heels will be straight down, and the uh, uh, and then the toe is shorter. Okay, and what you see here, the white hair is the sole. That's what the horse is walking on. It's not decoration. And uh, uh, if and when we did this, I was fortunate the the trimmer uh, that she'd call me and she needed some help. Da, 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 da. And I, I love her because she's kind of one of these um, very detailed trimmers. She's anal. And so I said, we got to trim this A, B, and C, and D. So she did. And the first week I got, um, uh, uh, I, I'll show you this, uh, with these horse's feet, we took these pictures, but I needed a ruler in them. Oh, so right. Got, uh, half of these pictures had rulers and half did not. And if you don't have a ruler, you can't see the how much this changes because if you trim with a ruler on Monday and you come back on Wednesday and Thursday, this foot will change. That's how fast it, ch it changes a lot. And okay, and so, but a year later, this horse uh, went um, fox hunting. Fox hunting, yeah. So it's just uh, barefoot. Okay, but but then once you get it to this point, you can go trimming three to four weeks depending on how fast the foot grows. If you I have some of these that people, when they get to this point, they revert back to their old habits. Mm -hmm. They trim five, six, seven, eight weeks, and it doesn't take too long for the foot you see here to get what it was on in the previous slide. And then they, that's when the clinical signs come back. And it's just kind of, uh, but once you get to that point, you know, you, you figure out how, in the, like in the warmer months here in the States, uh, you just trim. And if the owner's interested, you just bevel the foot. You know, it's kind of like many of the, riders are women and they usually are used to trimming their nails with a little file or whatnot and if you did that two or three times uh you know every once or twice a week a and what you're months. talking about is this here where they've beveled yeah, the edge yeah, so beveled. and oh. and when you do that you're going to come inside the white line mm -hmm. okay and it, it'll take you i'll just say 30 seconds for each foot it's not a big deal and, and by doing it that way you're not you are not going to make the horse sore Cool. Okay. All That's right. Amazing. This here is the same foot when we started. Wow. The previous horse. And what we see here, all right, the, uh, the toe at the bottom, you see this little divot here? That's the crena. Yep. When you see that, it means the toe is too long. Okay. And, what, and you have to think when you start to see that <clears throat> the toe being too long, the biomechanics are going to change not only with the DDFT, but with this long toe, I'll bring this up, it's going to actually pull the periosteum off the dorsal surface of the coffin bone. And you have some pictures of that later, yeah, right? Yeah. And when you see that, what it is that not only does the hoof wall grow, get longer, but the coffin bone becomes long. Because as soon as you elevate that periosteum, bone fills in. And uh, that, that's everyone's seen uh, radiographs with slipper toes. Even though you know, people call it mechanical laminitis, and they'll put do whatever they do, and they'll come back um, or you later take radio, and they don't see that little slipper toe, and they're happy and that sort of. But the problem is where that slipper toe began to where it ended. That is now the length of the toe. The toe has grown longer. And so, when you talk about slipper toe, I hope we have an X-ray in your slideshow here. It's it looks like a little elf shoe at the end right. of the coffin like, on, right. on the X-ray. Right, it looks like a little, and, and it feels, and what that does, it's due to the hoof wall being long, it's actually pull the periosteum. So it's kind of like it's just stretching it away, stretching and it's away. pulling on the bone, and it's deforming the bone, and then the bone's forming. And the, bone bend, the bone fills in between the periosteum and that uh, elf shaped uh, protrusion. Oh, wow. So it's permanent. It's, I think it's, everyone thinks it's permanent, but I think it will change if you start trimming the foot short. Okay. It's like, like you've probably seen people uh, uh, when they're that are older in their 40s and 50s, they'll have braces on their teeth. Some people will have a back brace. And what it is, if you keep the pressure constantly with what you want to do, the bone will re, uh, regrow to that because in us, the calcium is replaced every five years. I assume, oh, okay. it's, plus, I assume it's plus or minus the same with the, with the horse. So if, right. you, so if you can maintain it for a long enough period in the in a good way, the bone's going to remodel in a positive direction instead of remodeling in a negative right. direction. As, as, to go one step further with that, people 
are when they trim they're either trying to save money or whatever or so they put a shoe on they're trying to save money so they'll put shoes on every eight nine ten weeks right and if they trim it every seven or eight weeks the not only the hoof is getting longer but it's slowly uh, itching inching the uh, coffin bone longer so the so those long periods in between shoeing or trimming are actually really negative because you're allowing that foot to get stretched into a position that you really don't want and that's why for years is I'll show you that a little bit later is uh, it dawned on me because as I left uh, uh, a racetrack uh, sent me 35 three-year-old racing quarter horses from one state okay and as I dissected them, that, 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 I got the bones, all the wicked bone, P1, P2, all that sort of good stuff. I started looking at them and it, what it is, it was a, all the bones were the same, the same shape and size and all distance and that sort of, but thereafter the horses that are, quarter horses that are four or five, six years of age, depending on how they're trimmed or whatever, the toe you can see just start to lengthen. All my navicular horses are, have a significantly long toe compared to those three-year-old racing quarter horses. Wow. Okay, it's, it's, it's a long story, but anyway. But what you see in this one on the right, you see where the toe is, uh, go back up. Oh, okay. you, you're, you're, you're happy, go, or what you see on this one, the sole, how long it is. Oh, the sole, yep. The sole is a long toe and everything like that. So it puts biomechanically different forces on the uh, 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 coffin bone, or also on the pressure on the uh, navicular bone itself. and. I'm, with the navicular, everyone talks about the hole in the navicular bone. In these 35 3 0 racing quarter horses, 30, it's 40%, if I remember, 35 to 40% of those horses had a hole in the navicular bone, and it's because the toes are too, too long. That is that, that's kind of what they thought of as a navicular. But what it is in these 3 0 racing quarter horses, they died at the racetrack and they had holes in them and they were not lame so that's why i've started to think the hole in the vicular bone is not a big deal it's the what what the D, the pressure of the ddft what you see the erosion of the ddft is where a lot of the pain comes from and it's plus the rest of the frog and all that sort of stuff. so anyway it's that's an aside so i'm sorry not the cause it's just a symptom of the whole mechanics of the foot that's keep, going right yes go back okay i'm sorry i'm going too okay. slow here okay that's a, no no it's fine if you got more to say keep saying it <laughs> what you see here in this frog, you see it has some flat areas, so it's been trimmed by a knife. Oh, yeah, here. Hoof knife, okay. You see the, the central sulcus, it's starting to get narrow, but you see the, it's not filled in caudally. So the, the, the caudal edge of that is somewhere along the pastern. Right. Just, okay, okay. Which means the point of that is going to be angled towards the coffin bone and the uh, bony column pastern. And that I'll show you, that's where these ligaments are attached. So when that happens, it's the, the ligaments on the inside of the foot are not supporting the tissue. They don't create the negative pressure and all that sort of good stuff. Okay. Okay. And so well, you see where the hoof is being worn, uh, the flat areas on the heels. Yes, got it. Okay. That you want up at the very caudal part of the, of the central sulcus. Oh, this you want back here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Which, that's... Yeah. really stretched forward, really distorted forward. All right, that's what it looks like. But what is happening, the foot is so far forward and the frog is staying where it is, so the frog appears to be going back. But if you start oh, to bevel right. the toe, the frog comes forward. Right, the frog and hasn't moved, the foot's moved, yeah. so it looks the move, like the foot the is moved, yes, back. yes, yeah. Got okay. it. Okay, and again, don't touch the frog or the sole under any conditions. That was Vets and Ferris, same page, late 1800s, okay. And this here, you can see where that wear is, is on that portion there. And what it means is the whole back part of the foot, they're not being used. Back here, back, all this the part. The whole back part of it, and there's some good stuff back there, okay? Right. Okay. And the, is, when you start to see this frog is atrophying, getting smaller, mm -hmm. the vessels on the inside of the foot are changing. And my belief is that most of the blood flow going to the foot through the digital arteries is should be going to the frog and the digital cushion, mostly the frog, which is just the opposite. Most people think most of the blood flow is going to the lamina and that sort of stuff. I'm not in that camp, okay? 
So the major blood supply to the foot is into the frog area. That's where mother nature wants it to go. Okay. However, the way we're trimming it like this is, uh, is that we've, all right, let me back up. I'm sorry. The okay. horses you uh, saw that had a very short toe. Let me go back. Oh, just to show you, keep going. Uh, no, okay. All right. What you, all right, what you see in the feral horse foot? This one? Yeah, that one there. Between the tip of the frog, it has a certain area in front of that. Okay, say call out a short toe. Yep. Then go back down to this foot where we were. Keep going right here. This area is much larger. The, okay. the sole is much, uh, the horn is much, which also means the dermis underneath that has to cover a greater area. The vessels are always changing. They're growing and forming and all that sort of stuff. But however, the blood flow to the foot hasn't changed. You still have, say, I'll say 100 mLs going to the blood, going to the foot per unit time, and all that sort of stuff. Whether you got a short toe or a long toe, but when you have a long toe, it puts the the front part of the foot in a more fragile state. Okay. Because you you have to supply uh, all the dermal tissue and all that sort of stuff with blood to do it. But if you have a short toe, most of it's going where it should be, and that's where the frog gets atrophied. So same amount of blood, larger area to cover, less blood flow to the individual tissues. Right, like with your lawn, if you had a, a small um, paddock like 10 feet by 20 feet, and you, when you water it, you can keep it green. However, if you double or triple that, but you had the same amount of water, you're gonna have some brown spots. Right. Okay, it's the same, it's the same way. Okay, I'm, yeah, okay. Okay, keep going. Got it. All right, all right, this is just, this here, the black lines are where the foot should be, but it's not. You see where the foot is? You see the, the, the foot is at the, the crenner and the toe. And okay, so here's, what, the crana, here's the toe. So really you're saying this foot should be brought back to that black line. Right. Not at one trim, obviously. Correct. Right. But if you do it gradually, because what you're doing is when you trim gradually, and uh, when we trim these horses, we did it once a week but we didn't remove very much because uh, the owner didn't want to have a lame horse. And because uh, he, he wasn't, person wasn't into barefootness, okay? And once well, you, you- have to give the foot a chance to recover from you, each change, just like when we change something, we've got to give it a chance to recover to kind of assimilate that, right? Right, assimilate it, but it's going to change for the better, it adapts. Right. Because when you have, you start to do this, the hoof wall, the vessels will start to change, the connective tissue inside the change, everything will change. And eventually you want to get to the point where the central sulcus, the caudal part of the central sulcus is at that black line. Yep. The heels are going to be back there too. And you'll see this central part of the frog where the circle is will start to enlarge. Because what I've been doing now the last six weeks is uh, looking under my scope and all this sort of, the tubules inside that frog and that part of there are two times as large as what there are in other parts of the frog. So it means there's more blood flow going to that part. And if you look where that is, it's directly underneath the navicular bone. That forms yeah. part, of the, part of the cushion when the navicular bone is being loaded. So, so I had Daisy Bicking on um, last week and she was talking about how when you kind of felt along the bars, you could feel little bumps and that way you knew where the, where the coffin bone was. And so we're looking at kind of a similar idea here that you've got an, a change in this area, which is supporting those internal structures. Right. Yeah. But and that, so, that, yeah, I, I just know because, yeah. Okay. So but as more, you do this yeah, trim yeah. here, you're not moving the frog forward. You're moving the heel back, but the heel's going to wind up back at this black line. That's what I look. And what you'll see, you'll see how narrow the heels are. Yep. The, the bump. No, go up here. The, 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 oh, here. Yep. The bump. That it's kind of a very sharp arc. Yeah. Okay. And what that will almost start to straighten out. So it'll get broader because it's going to because the foot will get wider. Right. Okay. Cool. So, okay. All right. This here, this is the same foot that we've been talking about. It was a year later, seven months, seven or eight months later, da, 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 all that sort of stuff. Okay. Wow. And what you see is on the left of 917s when we first started, you see the crenner here. What you see here on the right, we've not touched the sole nor have we touched the frog. The frog gets bigger when you don't touch it. 
Wow. Okay. And by having a ruler, we can do all these measurements. And you see where your black arrow is, that uh, roughed area there? Yep. The breakover is the, is the uh, area between that area and the, and the sole, the black inside the sole. Here. That's, that's where breakover is on this foot. Wow. Okay. Okay. And this, is, this frog will get bigger and bigger. And what's happening is the central sulcus is starting to get, will fill in in the back. It's getting there. It'll, it'll close over. It does close over. At the back here. Yeah, it'll That's the back here. Up. And that, what's closing over is the uh, the the heels. Get, you can actually compare the two heels. It's 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 going to be broader on the right than it is on the left. Yeah, this width versus yeah. this width. And if you don't have a ruler, it's kind of someone arguing against somebody. You know, right. it's it's just an opinion. But if you have a ruler, you can show that. Right. Okay. okay. And then are, are these um, uh, lateral sulcus getting bigger? The foot's getting wider, so they go. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. This here, this is just a feral horse feet that I did with Gene and Barbara Page, eighty years ago, I guess. It's been a long time. But so, uh, what you have here is the importance of this dirt plug. You see uh, the white area there uh, is all the dirt plug, and we'll sit, and if you. You see these markers on the dorsal hoof wall. You have a wire along the hoof wall. And that's why it's very important to have markers on your, on your foot when you take a radiograph. If you're a trimmer or farrier, a uh, horse owner, and the veterinarian doesn't do that, you have to kind of please ask them to do it. Be polite, okay? Uh, and you'll see how thick the wall is here. This here, this, this paper's in the literature in the 1990s where the wall, anything uh, greater than, it's like, I forget exactly, 20, 18 to 20 uh, millimeters thick from the dorsal surface of the coffin bone to the edge of the surface. That was diagnosed in navicular because it had to do with rotation. Oh, okay. Okay. But what it is, when you have uh, a foot like this or a barefoot horse has been barefoot and short toe, the hoof wall gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And most of my horses, the hoof wall is like 21 to 23 millimeters, yeah, 23 millimeters thick. From the coffin bone to the, where the wire is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so we have somebody asked a question is how often do you need to trim a foot to get it back to normal? Yeah, all right, and what we did is, um, it's the same thing as the, the hoof is growing from the coronet. It's also growing from the bar, it's forward. The sole does grow down but it also grows forward, it's a conveyor belt. That's why you have a long toe. Oh, that's a great image, conveyor belt. <laughs> it's a conveyor belt. And if, if you're not sure of that, those of you who trim, you have pigmented soles, get a ruler, trim so you can see the pigment. And if you come back several weeks or do it again, you'll see that pigment is diluting as it's going forward. And it may just go to the, the, the edge of the hoof, depending on where it's at the heels, so it'll go towards the heels. And when you bring the heels back, it'll actually curl back and go backwards. Wow. Use that. Use the pigment in the sole to help you identify where things are going. Okay. It's just kind of you got to have a ruler though, because otherwise you 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 you, you go crazy because you're not really sure. Okay, so a ruler so, keeps you honest. Yeah, the ruler keeps you honest. So it's growing forward. Okay. So what you see uh, here it, or the, it was the frequency of trimming. Yeah. If you, tr when you're doing this, if you, if maybe go back one. Okay. Uh, hang Slide. on. All right. On the right, left-hand side, we had to get the toe from, you see where the crenner is to the apex. Yep. And what you see here on the right, it's the same foot. Seven or eight months later, you can see where the wear is on that black area to the uh, apex. So That's actually going to be a shorter line. And so, and so what you're doing is if you trim the one on the left, it was every six to eight weeks, you're not gonna make any ground because the conveyor is slowly moving forward from the heels uh, out to the surface. So if, if you do it, say at eight, once every eight weeks, okay, you'll be treading water. So if you do it, I, we usually suggest once a week, but you're doing just a little bit, you don't have to, if you take too much off, your horse is going to be sore because it can't grow that much. So you're trying to get in front of this uh, conveyor belt movement. 
So you need to you need to do something to that foot on a regular basis in less than six weeks, even if it's the way I think of it is if you just take a rasp and just kind of knock off the edges on a regular basis, you're going to maintain the foot rather than letting it get away from you and then having to do a lot of adjustment. Right. But then at the, when you get to the toe, you come in. So I'll show you how you'll come inside the white line and you'll okay. bevel, bevel it and you do that. And then once you get and go back up one more slide. Keep one more. I'm sorry. It's OK. Another one. Another one. Uh, when you get, all right, this here, once you get to that point, you kind of know how fast that hoof wall is growing from the coronet as well as the heels. You'll do it every three or four weeks, a regular trim, once you're there. Right, and, and depending on the time of year, foot grows fast. In the wintertime, it'll, it'll be less, the longer time. And if it's a, an active foot, you may have to do it shorter time. But if you do it shorter time, you don't have to remove much hoof. Right. Like I do my own horse. And so it's easier for me to come in once a week and do a tiny bit than trying to do a lot yeah. every four weeks. And at the, the other thing, if you're a trimmer or farrier, owners don't like sore horses. So if you do a little bit, you're, you're sure you're not going to make the horse sore. But you, know, you have to come back frequently until you get that to the point where you want it. And then once you get to the point where you want it, it's every three or four weeks, depending on how, foot the foot, how fast the foot grows. All right, but we've got some questions, but I think what we need to do is move on. So, and hopefully you've got some pictures here of a little more of the internal structures because somebody asked, what is the frog stay exactly? But so far we've been looking okay. on the I'm, outside. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I go a little bit slow. But, but the point of this feral horse foot, okay? No one pays attention to this. You move it up a little bit. I don't, okay. You can see the bottom. I got it. You see where the, uh, the dirt plug is? Where that dirt plug is, the break over this barefooted horse is not at the the outside of the cop, not a, not the outside of the hip. Yeah, okay, it's it's kind of in where your line is now and go quarter. That's where the breakover is. Yeah. Okay, and that's the dirt plug. Then if you go up, you'll see it's usually about six seven millimeters in front of the tip of the coffin bone. Oh, okay, yeah. So if I start from here, yep. Yeah, and and you go, and you, you draw a line up from the coffin bone. It's usually we did a lot of stuff from a radiograph of these, and this is a live feral horse. It's not a foot. It's a feral horse. A live one so it's just kind of and so he has that na that lovely little roll in the toe that's moved the break over back and it's really right here where it's kind of yeah. making contact with the with the that's the that's what the dirt plug has done yeah and the other thing if you have a pretty good foot the length of the coffin bone from the tip of the coffin bone to the palmar process palmar process it, guide me uh it's uh, at the end of where the yellow line is oh back here okay okay so that line there should be twice as long as it is from the end of the uh, Palmar process to the heels. Okay, I get it. Which, which so means the, the red line is one time, and so the distance from the Palmar process to the tip should be twice that distance. Yeah, right. And it means you've got pretty good stuff in the back part of the book, the heels. Yeah, because you can see how much stuff is back here. And the other thing, you, you see how these heels, from the red line, it kind of goes up towards the pastern or the, at the pastern joint. Yep. That's all filled in with good stuff. Yep. Those horses where it's not, it's almost you have a straight line going to the navicular bone that comes directly across. Yeah. Um, and also what we can see on this x-ray is how clean this edge is on the, yeah. on the coffin bone. There's no, what you call- There's slip no slipper, toe, slipper toe or anything. Oh, the nice okay. clean line. Does everyone understand that so far? Now, in so. my horses, <laughs> okay, I want the, this yellow line to be the same length as this red line so you want twice as I, much of the back of the foot as i want a good back foot i really don't care about the toe okay if i have a good back foot navicular laminitis i'm not worried about it okay when you have a good back of the foot if you've got a good back part of your foot your a lot of these problems disappear okay 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 so but this can only really be seen on x-ray right that can only be seen on x-ray yeah Okay. But, but you have a hint. If the central sulcus is on the ground, and the central sulcus should be kind of, if you put your two hands together, the, the webbing. Put your hands up the, where we can see them, Bob. Oh. There you go. The webbing between your uh, index finger and thumb, yep. that should be almost uh, a little, dip, that's how deep it should be, and the central sulcus is vertical to that. Okay. And so when that central sulcus starts to go up towards the heel, this back part of the foot will start to deteriorate. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. We're, we're getting there. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. I'm, this is great. You keep going. You're doing awesome. Okay. Okay. <laughs> keep going. All right. We're in the inside of the foot. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's the top. This here, the toe is to your left. The heels are toward your right. You see the DDFT? Uh, uh, right here. Right here. And to you, that's white. There's a piece of fiber cards in the DDFT directly underneath the, uh, the navicular bone. This, okay. this this is the cartilage right here you're talking about? No, no, the, the white area in the DDFT. This. That area in the DDFT, that's the fiber cards in the DD, DDFT. Okay, got it. Okay. Now, in the, at the front tip of that uh, white area, here, okay, to the coffin bone, you see it's more pink? Yes. There's a lot of small micro vessels that uh, feed from that area. They go down just below the DDFT. You, you, Okay. Yep, down into here. You see how red that is? Yep. There's a gazillion and a half small vessels there. Okay. We're, yep. we're getting, okay, we're getting. Now. And this is our coffin bone here, right? <laughs> that's the coffin bone you. there, yes. And if you keep coming forward, there's a little divot, a, a blip. Come back a little bit. Keep coming. This right, way. right. The, the, the junction between where you're curving and the straight line on the coffin bone to, to your left. A little bit, just a little bit more, a little bit right, right there. That is where the call the semi noodle line. Okay. The semi noodle line is where the front edge of the DDFT attaches onto the coffin bone. So it's coming all the way to here. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. To go one step with this bone, this in lengthening of the coffin bone, the distance from here to the front part of the coffin bone is going to get longer and longer and longer. So it's kind of like you having to. A ski as opposed to a, a, a short short toe. So it's going to put more stress on all these structures as well as the navicular bone. Kind of like yeah. walking in swim fins and it's going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. Now, you see you see these little white things going through there? The, the frog? I'm sorry. I'm pointing. I can see my finger. But you... <laughs> can you see my pointer? Yes. Go to your left. You see all these... Uh, go up a towards the DDFT, these, these white sheets, they're sheets. Oh, yeah. Uh, come down here. There's a lot of those sheets that arise underneath the coffin bone, keep going to your left, and it, you can make a big circle uh, in that area there, uh, not, not that big, uh, is uh, keep coming back, down, down, follow the edge of the frog get along, and go straight up in there. That's where all of these arise from. Oh, okay. I there's see. There's sheet. This kind is, of fanning out from here, right? Yeah. There's a lot of sheets, and what they're doing, they're going down and attached to what's called the hypodermis, this gray area, just on the dorsal part of the frog. This part here? Yeah, this sort of. And what they do, they're, um, uh, here we go. Uh, they will form little cavities, chambers, where all the vessels are going to be. We'll so Okay. Are they and are they visible here, Bob? They, they are, but you won't. Uh, maybe go back. Keep going down one. I I have a drawing. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep keep going. Keep keep going. No, keep going. Keep going. Come on, well, Bob. What did I do with that? I don't know, Bob. Yeah. Holy crap. Keep going. Jeepers creepers. Where'd you put that drawing? Oh, there we go. There we go. Hey. There we go. All right. What you see here. You see, this is a, a young foot filled with Indian ink on the left. You see the white DDFT? Yep, the here. And underneath it is a distal annual ligament of the DDFT. Right that there. It goes up and it attaches to proximal structures in the foot. Okay. And then you see these white lines from that area I, I had you uh, enlarge. Yeah. And they're going down to the edge of the frog here. Yep. Okay. And so where that, when what I've done, uh, it's a long story, but the organization of these fascial sheets is into three different groups. Okay? okay, and I call them compartments. And what you see is one, they're starting from underneath the, the coffin bone and DDFT and they're going up and attaching to the lateral cartilage. That's the one chamber one. one. Okay, got it, one. one. These two arise from underneath the uh, P3 uh, coffin bone and they're going down to the frog. Okay. All the way up to here, um, all the way up to where, you see where three is? Yes. That's where the frog stay is. Oh, good, because somebody was asking about the frog stay. We'll, we'll go back to show, I'll show. But those are the fascial sheets. And what the one in three, the fascial sheet, uh, ligaments were described 150 years ago. 
but they, as a typical anatomist, they named them from the pastern down to the foot. They, okay. have, they don't have any function that way. But if you think of them as going from the foot up to the pastern, they this have way. a lot of function because what it is is the frog stay is, doesn't really move that much. The, pa the pastern is what's moving here. Okay. Okay. And so, so just to orient again, this is our coffin bone here on the left. Left, yep. This is our navicular bone here. Yep. And you have P2 there. Yep. Okay. And then you see the black air between the navicular bone and P3, the black. Uh, here? Uh, that's the impar ligament. Oh, okay. You see, it's all blood vessels. Yeah. Okay. And then you have the DDFT and the distal annular ligament. So these ligaments, where one is, they kind of form a hammock. Got it. They go underneath the coffin bone all the way up to the lateral cards. And when they're going up to the lateral cards, they're going to the left and right part of the foot. Okay. Okay. These under two, they're arising from the coffin bone and DDFT and they're going down and attach all along the frog epidermis. Okay. To the edge of the frog stay. And the ones in the frog stay arise from the frog stay and they're going up all the way up to the pastern. So it's really the, oops, the direction is from toe up to leg. Right, right. I mean, it's, it's, like in the it's an anatomical, uh, and anatomists get anal sometimes, and because a lot of these structures were named from prox from the, the leg to the foot. Right. That's one way you can name, but they have no function that way. So you've, I'm not going to change when I'm publishes, I'm not going to change the name of these, but, but their function is from the foot, since it's, it's uh, not moving, the leg is actually moving in relation to the foot. And so by doing that, when the foot is, you can see when the coffin bone is, when the foot's on the ground and the pastern and uh, is straight, these ligaments will become tight. Okay. Okay. And that's going to create a negative pressure and all that sort of stuff. And what you see on the left-hand side, that's where the, that's what they look like. Okay. So, you see. Um, we, we've, we've had a, I just discovered that we've had a lot of questions, but um, I think probably it's best, Bob, to just kind of let you talk and then we can go back and I can, later on, I can go back and look at the questions and maybe we can do this again and answer some more because I think today it's really just kind of orienting people to the foot to structures they're not used to seeing or even okay, think. Okay, that, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Can you go back up now? Yep. Okay. You keep going to where we were. Uh, okay. Getting there. Don't want to make people sick going too fast. Okay, okay. Right, <laughs> there keep, we go. Keep, we were there. Keep, keep, yep, keep coming down. Yep, keep coming down. That's where we were. And that's where we were here, okay? Right. Now, where this frog is and the digital cushion. Yep. Okay. And, and you bring your black arrow to your right. Not right. You see, you see the little bump here in the, in the horn? That's the frog stay. Oh. It's a ridge. It's a ridge. Uh, and what happens is all of these ligaments will attach to that uh, from the back part going up to the pastern and from some of them from the frog, okay? The, it's, and that's the kind of the, the, the stay I mentioned with the ship the yep. rope that, keeps, that keeps the mast rigid and it takes a lot of the stress off the foot, it takes a lot of stress off the mast with these uh, uh, ropes. That's kind of, and, and the one step further, these are called ligaments just because it's anatomy term, but they're actually fascia. It's, it's okay. Kind of, it, it's, there's not much difference between fascia and ligaments, except this fascia here, they're finding out in humans, it can change, remodel, and uh, respond and adapt to become stronger, bigger, and better. It can heal itself as opposed to a ligament. Ligaments just heal with scar tissue. That's kind of a simple way of looking at it. Right. So it's actually better that it's fascia. It's better that it's fascia. It's kind of because in where this uh, frog is in the digital cushion, you have these myxoid cells. It's M Y X O I D. Right. And the, is that up here where my pointer is right now? A, but it's throughout the entire frog as well as the digital cushion. Okay. And what the myxoid cells, they're technically they're associated with connective tissue forming, fascia, ligaments, and cartilage. But they no one dares to say they're they they uh, uh, they just help the formation of those structures. Okay. The point of all what I all this here I'm starting to become an anatomist. I don't mean to be that. Is that this whole thing the frog and digital cushion? It means it can rehabilitate itself. 
because these tissues, where the cells are, those tissues can rehabilitate. And if you go back up to where the, the frog is, uh, uh, no, and the, yeah, the, the foot, keep going, keep going, keep, keep going, right here. What it is on the, on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, you see the, how big that is on the, on the uh, right-hand side? Yep. That's not filled with air. That's filled with tissue as a result of these myxoid cells. This is the same foot from on the left. So the so the give taking the pressure off the foot allows the foot to heal itself. Yes, the, what it is those ligaments they respond to healing not by the frog does not like compression. Okay, that's why I say with a lot of these uh, therapy boots they're all very good and all these are good qualifiers. Okay, but is one I use is I won't mention the name, but uh, they have uh, the therapy boot uh, with severe laminate. Of course, they have a big frog stay in them. Yep. You have to remove that if you're if you use if you trimmer and use that for therapy. You have to remove that because it puts too much pressure on the frog. Constant pressure on the frog is a good way to get the frog gone. It disappears. So so like like uh, the horse's back. If you have a constant pressure from a saddle fit, the tissue actually atrophies, and in yeah. the same way, yeah, this, you get the, that. The frog just disappears. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Keep going. So this the the difference in the frog of different sizes. It's, it's filled with something and it's due to the connective tissue as a result of the um, myxoid cells. Okay, uh, keep back to back up. I, I got a lot. All right, so the, all right. The next one here, keep, let, go to the next one. Okay. So this is a foot. What you see here, this is a horse that was chronically named and it was diagnosed navicular. Da, 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 okay. What you see where the black arrow is on the navicular bone, there's actually a, a hole in the navicular bone, and where the arrow is on the DDFT, there's uh, <clears throat> the, the navicular bone is very paper thin there, and the empire ligament to the left is, is red because there's inflammation there, okay? What it is where the arrow on the DDFT is, is pointing to the navicular bone, most of the holes in the navicular bone are kind of an afterthought. They're due to pressure, okay? In this case here, this where they are located, that's pressure of a horse standing in pain a lot not moving. You'll see the same thing on chronic laminate, of course, there'll be a pain there because they're just so sore. So right. they, they, they keep them in a stall. And so that's when they develop the pain. Because I mean, they're just standing and they're, they're just, not. They'll develop the hole. And that's, and uh, like I said, in three-year-old racehorses, you'll see the same thing. But that's because of the, the, the coffin bone is too long. The, the toe. The toe is too long, the toe, toe is too long, okay. And what you see, where your arrow is on the DDFT? Yep. There you st you'll start to see, uh, it looks moth-eaten from the arrow up to your right, going up the DDFT. This way. There's a lot of microvessels through there that have support not only the DDFT, but also the frog here. Their damage are destroyed. Okay. Okay. And you see the arrow, uh, the first big arrow where the hole is and you, the end. Uh, oh, this one? No, down in the DDFT. The end of it in the frog, that tissue is de de disintegrating. So it's being basically crushed. It, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, it, to me, it's the vibration that's doing it. Okay. Okay. And so all of this tissue in the frog, and the, you see how, uh, uh, go back up one more slide, go forward. You see all these ligaments you see here? Yep. Okay. When you, and the holes there are vessels. They, they start to dilate, okay? This is a racehorse foot. Okay. They start to dilate. And, and where you're just in front of the frogs, they where you're just to your right of your black arrow. Yep. Okay. Where are they? That's going into the lateral, those vessels are going into the lateral cartilage. Okay. And it's out of the plane of the picture. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Uh, so, so, uh, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm trying to think of what I have. And so, what it is, is there's a lot of horses that are lame in both forelimbs that have no damage to the uh, navicular bone or the dorsal part of the DDFT. So are you gonna, it's kind of, what are you gonna call that? A navicular, I call it navicular. I, to me, the navicular is, I relate it to the clinical lameness. Some people call it caudal, uh, palmar heel pain. Right. Uh, all these sorts, but, but then they don't know what to do. So, but it's all navicular, but then that's why I say, you assess the owner. If the owner is smart and, and level headed and all this sort of stuff, you tell them this is what we're gonna, because they'll get their horse back. That's kind of what I'm going with all this stuff. 
You okay? Yep, I'm just, some people have had to leave, but um, okay. We're, this is being recorded, so I'll be able to play it back later. So no problem. You know, I've got you and I'm gonna let you keep rolling. <laughs> okay, keep going down now. All right, so this is kind of, uh, I think there's text in the top. Say it again? There's text at the top part of this slide. Yeah. Oh. Or, no, that's the bottom part. Okay. So this slide, it, it depends on what you call navicular, is what I was alluding to. If you're waiting for changes to be in the navicular bone on radiograph or MRI or something like that, there's been now so much damage in the foot, the frog is destroyed by then and the digital cushion is destroyed by then, so much damage. But if you have a horse that is sore in both forelimbs, when you do a nerve block, he's sore in the other one as well. Okay. Yeah. If you assume you just have foot pain, you can call it caudal heel pain. It doesn't really matter to it, but it's, this will progress to navicular changes in the bone. Because all of my horses I've done over the last 30 years that have had a whole navicular bone, clinical lane, the frog was destroyed, the digital cushion destroyed, and the back part, the caudal part of the DDFT was damaged. It meant that there's a lot of damage in that part of the foot. So it, it's just a philosophy, what you call pathology, because pathology is uh, the study of disease. Right. Okay. And back in the 1990s, I asked three pathologists, if you had some malignant cells, handful of malignant cells in the chest cavity of a human, no clinical signs, because path pathology, you need to have clinical signs, they say. Right. But if you had this handful of malignant cells in the chest cavity of a human, no clinical signs, is that disease? I got three different answers. Oh, wow. One person wanted to have, you know, blood spitting out of the mouth, and that's one seeing a radiograph, and that's, the, that doesn't do the person any good. I was, they're, they're very severe, okay? But if you wait till you see a lot of damage, and with horses, if you wait to see a lot of damage in the vicative on DDFT, it's gonna be hard for the owner to get the horse back. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where I am in my career, okay? So, so when you start to see clinical signs, if you start to assume it's navicular and start trimming the way I suggest, the owner can get their horse back. I mean, when they get their horse back, they'll be able to use it and ride it. That's kind of where I come. So it's really being able to pick up what, what is going on and deal with it sooner before, so it doesn't cause so yeah, much yeah, damage yeah. to make it actually and, and by doing this with horse owners, that's kind of why I hope a lot of people there are horse owners. Is, I think uh, they are, yep. <laughs> uh, is that you have to have enough confidence when you discuss it with a vet and farrier and trimmer that you're not intimidated, okay? Yeah, it, and it's hard. I've been it's around the block the a few times. Because, and, you know, they're trusting the, the authorities to know better than they do. But what I find, it's like with saddle fit. The owners have to take the responsibility of learning as much as they can so that they make wise decisions. Yeah, they have to make wise, but they have to know a little bit of the jargon right. and not be intimidated, you know, by, the, by anybody. Right. You know, and the vets and farriers and trimmers are trying to do the best they can and all this other good Absolutely, stuff. we all are. Okay, okay, keep going. Okay. Right. This is the first navicular horse I saw when I was at MSU, okay? What you see here, you see P2, a navicular uh, coffin bone, DDFT. You see the frog here in the digital cushion. If you had gloves on and you palpated that, it would feel like a, a wad of fat. You'd feel no fascial sheets, you'd feel no fiber cars, nothing. Okay. So it's soggy. It's soggy. And if you look at the DDFT, the DDFT has very few fibers in it. It's, it's, you see the, where they're red, it looks choppy. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's because it's been so much damage and it'll actually be a hole that, that would be an adhesion between the navicular bone and uh, DDFT. That's yep. been going on for a long time, years, years and years and years and years. Okay. And that's kind of what you, so if that's, if you have to wait there and then before you start treating it, you've kind of missed the boat. Okay. It's going to be hard for that horse to get back to, to usefulness. Okay. Keep going. All right. So All right. there's been a bunch of questions, but I'm not, I'm just letting everybody know. I'm not responding to the questions because if I stop Bob's flow, we don't get back to the sort of the basics, which is what we're covering right now. And um, I'm certainly going to see if we can't get to some of those questions, but 
obviously we need to have Bob back to do more of this. Go, go back up to that pre the previous slide. This here, if you got that early, the toe, because this had shoes and all that sort of for years, and the, the question with the shoes, usually if you've got a long toes and shoes, the vibration is gonna be higher. Okay. And that's just radiating through the tissue itself. And so if you start to trim it the way I suggest, this fascial sheets inside the frog and digital cushion will start to rehabilitate itself. And I've seen that, it does. That's kind of look, look under the microscope. Okay, keep going. And what you see here, this is where the lateral carbs and everything has been, been deteriorated. This is what I did back in the early 90s, middle 90s, 25 years ago. Uh, I did all this, but I didn't know what I was doing. And I kept, I found that those, all my navicular horses had very thin cartilage. And the digital cushion looked like what you have around your waist. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's okay. a good description. <laughs> okay. All right. And so it does nothing. Fat does nothing. Except add to the your weight on the scale okay and and so we're literally so um are the lateral cartilages actually cartilage or are they just a modified fascia at all no they're lateral cartilage okay but but and you go to the next slide i think i have a okay all right this is all right go back up this is this here when they get to this point here where they're very they've been damaged and so what it is, the cartilage cells start to deteriorate, and that's why it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Okay. Okay. And the thinness is, uh, uh, okay. Uh, you want to go back up? Yeah, go back up. Okay. The, the thinness, if you, because we did a lot of horses, is um, if you cut the level through the navicular bone and you measure the thickness of the cartilage at that point, add them together through the width of the horse, that in the navicular horses, it was, 10%, the cartilage was 10% of the width of the horse. Very few are 10%, they're mostly less than that. Okay. Horses had a pretty good feet, it's like 30 to 40% of the width of the horse, of the- Of the foot. Of the foot. Okay. So you have, a, the point being you have, a, it's a sneaker, you have a lot of support as opposed to a high heel. Okay. Okay, keep, keep going down now. What you have here, this is a navicular horse. See, it's a eight or nine year old warm -up. There's a, a, what you see, here, yellow lines are on the uh, the right hand side. Yep. Oop, you froze up, Bob. Bob, you froze. Oh crap. 